Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another reading through the New Testament. Today's posting is up late, and I apologize in advance for that, uh, but we'll be caught up here shortly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we begin reading today. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in the whole of Achaia, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that we will that he will deliver us again. You also must help us by prayer, so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. For our boast is this, the testimony of our conscience that we behaved in the world with simplicity and godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and supremely so towards you. For we are not writing to you anything other than what you read and understand, and I hope you will fully understand, just as you did partially understand us, that on the day of our Lord Jesus you will boast of us as we will boast of you. Because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first, so that you might have a second experience of grace. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Do I make my plans according to the flesh, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no, at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. For it is God who establishes us with you in Christ, and has anointed us, and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. But I call God to witness against me, it was to spare you that I refrained from coming again to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, for you standing firm in your faith. The beginning of this letter indicates that there has been a conversation ongoing between Paul and Corinth. It is speculated, though not without valid reason, that that communication was written through the, trans, uh, trans, uh, the transportation of letters. <clears throat> so when Paul writes in 1 Corinthians about the things which they wrote, it was a response in some part of the letter to the letter that Corinth had sent Paul. So here again, it's probable that what we find in 2 Corinthians is a continuation of that correspondence not necessarily the totality of that correspondence. And the significance of where we are in this letter is that Paul has acknowledged, or is about to acknowledge, 
that they have made some changes that he's requested. But in the same communication, he's also acknowledging that there are some who are undermining who he is, accusing him and other workers of being yes and no's, that is, indecisive and changing their minds, when usually that is a tactic on the part of the guilty, casting that upon the truly innocent and saying, well, you're the ones who's doing the yes and no, when in fact the guilty ones are. And Paul says, along with the workers that he had, he was innocent. One of the things that, in application, that I find fascinating in this first chapter is the grand reliance that the Apostle Paul places upon the interaction between Christians, even outside of their local fellowship or congregation, that there was an importance placed upon their connection. And that was in a world pre-Twitter, <laughs> pre-social media, pre-computer, pre-live stream, pre-everything that you and I think of as conduits and benefacts to getting us to be more connected. When really being connected is opening your heart and talking. So let that be an encouragement to you, wherever you are, that you're not alone, you're seeing my face. But if you need to talk, call me. If you need to be helped in any way, email me. And if it's possible for us to sit together and talk face to face, that's the true manifestation of what it means for us to be together in our fellowship. Thanks for joining, and join me again tomorrow for another reading through the New Testament as we try to make your weekdays strong with the New Testament.